God wants to have a personal relationship with you. He wants you to know him and him to, he already knows you, but he wants you to know him in such a way that you have personal communication, personal time with him, a time that's yours and his, that where you just, he becomes your best friend. He becomes your everything. He becomes your all in all. Jesus desires us to have that type of relationship to where basically it's like the one we're closest to. Where sometimes they can give us a look and we know what they mean. Anybody ever got one of those? <laughs> yeah, some hands are like, whoo, yes, preach it, brother. But he wants to know us in that way to where there's times to where we just know what he wants. We just know the direction he's sent in our lives. We just know it. We feel it. We, we just know it. And it's kind of like that. You know it and you're knower. <laughs> you all got knowers, right? <laughs> you know it and you're knower because you got this relationship with him because you're close to him. And you just know there's these times in your life to where, yes, this is the direction I need to go. Or, yes, this is what I need to do. Or, yes, thank you, Lord. He wants to have that personal relationship with us. And basically, that's where we've started as a church. We've been talking about this in this way, and we've tried to do kind of a diagram-type look for this personal relationship. And it's basically that we pursue Him. And we've talked about pursuing Him in the aspect that we, we, we desire to be with Him. Now, many of you who have gotten married, was there a time period in your life to where you pursued your spouse? Nobody? Maybe I was the only one. Can't look desperate. Okay, you all played hard to get. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> well, hey, I pursued Peggy, okay? We pursue that one that we want to have relationship with, that one that we want to spend time with. We go, we pursue them. We want to get to know more about them. We want to spend time eating with them. Uh, i got to tell the story. I won't even ask permission today. But I never will forget the time. i got to tell you this story. It's kind of off, but we'll be back, I promise. Right after this quick commercial, we'll be right back. When, I was, when Peggy and I were dating, I would never will forget the first date that we was visiting, and we was talking, and we was just visiting really serious. And then all at once, she moved her hands back and spilled her drink all over the front of herself. She was so embarrassed, and I was embarrassed for her. But I guess the point is that we were intently desiring to know one another. We wanted to get to know one another. We was finding out what our, what our belief systems were. We, were. we were visiting about what we believed, what we thought, what was important to us, the things that meant something to us. And the Lord's interested in, in you. In fact, He created you, and He wants that to be expounded, right? Am I, am I the only one here today? <laughs> Okay, all right, thank you. I, I, got a, I got an arm in the back flying for me. Thank you, yes, got two of them. Amen, we're moving forward now. But anyway, in this relationship, there's a pursuit to have a relationship with Him because He wants that with us. He desires to have that with us. Then there's that that we share about our relationship with Him. You know, I talk about my wife. I just told something that's kind of, you guys felt bad for her when I told that story, and you thought, like, he's a dog for telling that story. But anyway, we shared something about each other. Now, she'll get to share something later when she comes up and prays. Boy, I wonder what that's going to be. But we share things about our Lord. We share things about our relationship with our Lord. We share the goodness and how good he is to us and the things that he does for us. He's never failed us. He's always there, right? As well as we live 
that relationship with Him, where He becomes our all in all. He becomes our life to where we are not separated at any point in time, but we walk with Him on a continual basis. We live Jesus. Now, as I see these things this morning, and as last week we talked about Jesus being the center of all, I want to tell you where this wheel or this relationship symbol that we have as a church came from. And it came from our vision. Now, when I show you this vision, I want you to understand we worked for over a year putting this together. And it may not look like a year's worth of work, but we worked over a year to decide what we believed as a church. And what we believed is important as a church and the direction we're going. This is not just my vision or Peggy's vision. This is the vision of this church working together over the last two years. You remember that, don't you? Some of them are like, yes, we spent a lot of time working on this. But it comes down to this. We see this church family. We see you. We see what happening in this church as a church family pointing to Christ. In other words, we're giving Him the glory. We're telling of all the good things that He is. But not only that, we're letting Him be the one to speak in people's hearts and minds. We're not placing our convictions on their lives, but we're saying, Jesus, we, we want you to be the one to speak to them. So whenever they're going through things, we point to him, either through the word or through prayer of asking God to reveal himself, whatever it might be, but we always are pointing to him. So we see the church family as a family that is pointing to Christ that all people might experience the abundant life found in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. In John 10 and 10, it says, The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. I'm sorry if I'm picking on one subject, but it's a subject that, that I understand. When they show the alcohol commercials, they show all the parties. They show the, the ladies and the men, the people just having a wonderful time and just all the excitement. But I really wish they would show the rest of the story. I really wish they would show the abuse at home when someone gets drunk and because they're an angry drunk, they, they abuse their family. Or the, the guy who's laying in the street that's, covered in his own vomit because he's passed out. Or the people who actually take other lives because they are driving under the influence of alcoholism. And I'm sorry to pick on that one, but I'm picking on that one because that's the way enemy presents things. The enemy presents things to where this looks grand, this looks glorious, this is lots of fun, but it doesn't show the destruction of that. And I'm sorry to pick on that one because there's many, many others that we could pick on. But the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. What we see in this church, the vision we have for this church is that every person could have a personal relationship with Jesus, that they could have a rich and satisfying life. Now, when I say rich, it doesn't necessarily mean money. I'm a wealthy man, but that doesn't mean I have a lot of money in the bank. I'm wealthy because of my relationship with my Lord. I'm wealthy because of what I have in Him, and He's never left me. He never forsakes me. And I'm wealthy because every time I'm in a place that I need Him, guess what? He's there. I'm a part of one of the grandest families ever. And that is the family of my Lord Jesus Christ. See, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. In fact, it reads this way in the ASV. It says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Okay. If you live your life full on for Jesus Christ, I can make you a promise. It won't be boring. 
<laughs> it won't be boring. But it'll be abundant. Whenever you go through the things that you go through on this side of heaven, because we all go through stuff on this side of heaven, when you go through those things and you're experiencing the... Oh, I can't even... The most... Uh, how do you say it? Most difficult, that's the word I'm looking for. The most difficult time of your life. And you can feel His peace overwhelm you. You can feel His love overwhelm you. You can feel His goodness overwhelm you. Oh, it won't be boring. You see, David knew this. How many knew David? David was a man who was a shepherd boy. He was one that took out the giant with the, the rock and the sling. And, of course, he went and took his head. He was the little guy who nobody thought could do it, but he did. And he was also the same guy who was anointed as the king. David was this guy that actually, if you remember the time of David, David, after he came to a certain place that he gained popularity, the present king, Saul, actually wanted to take his life. And David was hiding in the, in the caves when Saul was after him. And David refused to kill the king because he knew it wasn't the right thing to do. But yet in all those times, this is what David writes. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The Lord is my shepherd and I have all that I need. I want to say it one more time, not just to be repetitive, but we need to understand this. Just having a relationship with our Lord, it's all we need. And we say we need this and we need that. In fact, we teach our grandkids to just say you need it. <laughs> you know, and of course, Poppy and Gigi will get it. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about... He is there for all we need. It's not about material. It's about having a Savior. It's about having someone who loves us, who can care for us, who can show us the way, who can give us peace when we need peace and comfort when we need comfort. It's all I need. David said this. He wrote this in Psalms. And we got to think about David's life. David had a pretty rocky road, right? In fact, it wasn't all peaches and cream. For David. We need to understand the Lord's love and trust Him. It doesn't matter what we're facing. In Him, we have all that we need. Everything that we need. It doesn't matter what we're facing. The good or the bad. I, I can't help but think of these times whenever Peggy and I made some crazy moves or people called it crazy. Peggy's mom's here, by the way. Regina, we're glad you're here. Bing, we're glad you're here this morning. But Regina remembers those crazy moves that we made to where we didn't have anything. In fact, the first... And second move we made, well, the second move we had a parsonage to live in. The first one we didn't have anything but a borrowed home to live in. As we was planting churches or doing church revitalization. And we went to those places not having a job, not having a place to live, not having anything. But we went because we knew it's what God told us to do. And, of course, people would look at us like, you're nuts. You're crazy. Yes, I am. I'm crazy for Christ, and I believe in what His Word says. He's all I need. David said, He's all I need. Now, we don't need to be foolish in that. We need to hear from Him before we do something like that. We need to know it's what He's telling us to do before we take off and move that way. But whenever we know it, we did that, and God provided for us. I've told stories. I'm not going to get off on all those stories today. But I've told you many ways that God provided. He's all we need, church. You see, King David, he loved being in the presence of the Lord. He loved 
being there. He loved that personal relationship that he had with him. In Psalms 23, David celebrated the intimate relationship he shared with God. We know David also made mistakes, right? We know he made a mistake. But yet, in the Word, it says David was a man after God's heart. Oh, I'm thankful for his forgiveness and his love. You see, I want to be recognized in that place of a man after God's heart. I want people to see me and say he's a man after God's heart. I want that to be revealed and shown. And I believe that's what God wants for our church as we have a relationship with Jesus, that we be people that whenever people look at us as a church body, they would say they are people after God's heart. They desire what God wants. They desire the fullness and the glory of all that God has. That's our vision. The passage here in Psalms 23 begins with the metaphor of the shepherd, the Lord leading his lamb, David, illustrating close attention, guidance, and protection. David was a shepherd, by the way. And we know that before he ever conquered Goliath, that we know that he took out a, a lion and a bear, right? He protected his sheep. He protected those who were around him. Those he was responsible for. Right? So he understood this as he was writing this. It says, I have all I need. Then in verse 2, he says, He lets me rest in the green meadows and leads me beside peaceful streams. How many has read this psalm before? Many of us. Beautiful. Especially when we understand this is David expressing his relationship with the Lord. It was, uh, I think, he, it, probably two weeks ago. I can't remember exactly. But I just had a lot of stuff going, in, going on in my mind and in my spirit. You know, because sometimes there's just a lot of stuff going on. Just a lot of stuff going on. Nobody was mad. Nobody's fussing. I'm not talking about that. That's the first thing people think about. I'm just talking about there's just a lot of stuff that was going on in my mind and in my spirit. I knew what I had to do. I had to go and get alone with the Lord. So I took off and I spent the day just with the Lord. I mean, just spent the entire day. And I know that's hard sometimes for us to do with jobs and different things that you do in situations. But as your pastor, the best thing I could do to make sure I'm doing what I need to do for you was I had to go spend some time with the Lord. But during that time, I was reminded of this scripture. To where there's times he wants us, with all this stuff going on in our life, he wants to lead us to a place that we feel peace. It doesn't have to be a day. It can be a moment. I know there's been times in the hospital that I would find, well, used to, you would find the little chapel in the hospitals. I don't even know if many of them have them anymore. But... A lot of my visits, you go to the, I'd go find that little chapel when I was really struggling for someone, praying for someone. And I could go in that chapel and sit there and just begin to praise the Lord and thank the Lord. And His peace would settle in. And it didn't matter what was happening. It could be during an open heart surgery that someone I was visiting with, I could feel that peace going on. Or someone going through a difficult time in their life, we could get peace because we knew that our Lord was there Haven't you gone through times in your life to where just having your spouse close to you or someone, a good friend close to you, it give you comfort? Jesus wants to be that person to lead us to those peaceful times in our lives. When, we're, when all is in turmoil in our mind and we're going through so much stuff, He wants to take us to that place of peace. It doesn't necessarily change what's happening around you, but it changes your spirit 
and you can breathe. And you can feel like that it's all going to be okay. He renews my strength. Oh, Lord knows I need that. How many ever gets weary? He renews my strength. David was saying these things out of a personal relationship with his Lord. He was saying this because of his personal relationship with him. He spent time with him. And those times, can you imagine the king being after you and you having to hide in a cave knowing that he wants to take your life? He had the whole army. He had, it'd be like the president of the United States sending the CIA after you. You'd feel that kind of pressure, you know what I mean? Might be a little different with all the drones and stuff, but anyway. But you know what I'm saying here. That was the pressure he felt, but yet as he was feeling that pressure, he knew that he was there with him. He knew he hadn't forsaken him. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to, my, to his name. Oh, let's keep that in mind. He was guiding me right along the right paths, bringing honor to His name. What does that look like? Whenever you're going through the diff- most difficult time of your life, you're going through situations in your life, and you have that peace come over you, and people look at you and say, how in the world can you have peace right now? In fact, I remember visiting an older minister, visiting him, going to encourage him going to go lift him up because he was going through a hard time. And guess what? Before I left, he had encouraged me. Because God shined all through him. Jesus' name would be lifted up. And then he says, Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Sometimes we can go through some dark times. We can go through some difficult times. But we do not have to fear. Especially when we have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He says, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. The staff, of course, has the hook on it to pull us back. To bring us back close. Or as well can be used. (laughs) As a weapon to protect. Our Lord desires. To be our all in all. He desires to have that personal relationship with us. That David was talking about here. To where we could write this. From our own experience. To where we could say these things, not reading about someone else, not reading it out of the Bible and saying that's a beautiful psalm, but it becoming part of our existence. You see, the vision we have for the church is that we would have this type of relationship with the Lord, that we would be so close to Him that it didn't matter. Anything could come against us. I would still have all I need. I could lose it all, but I'd still have all I'd need because he is my provider. You know, by the way, he did feed the Israelites for 40 years in a desert where there was nothing. And then verse 5 says, You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing." I do need to mention the ancient customs of hospitality and respect shown to esteemed dinner guest was for the host to be anointed was the host to anoint his invitee's head with oil. The oil was mixed with the fragrant perfumes to refresh and soothe weary travelers. So when they would sit down to dinner, this was what he was envisioning. He'd sit down to dinner after a a tough journey. He says, 
you anoint my head with oil. It was showing respect. It was showing that he wanted to refresh and soothe him. Let's go on. You anoint my head with oil speaks to the Lord's ministry to refresh David's heart, particularly in light of the immediate threat of his enemies. David imagines himself sitting at the Lord's banquet table while he is, his adversaries are gathered all around. But being in God's presence rejuvenated David, giving him the strength to face all the challenges and pressures of life. Is there anybody here that feels or has felt the pressures of life? Amen. David had a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. He was so close to him that he was known as a man after God's own heart. The vision again is that we would be this man or this person. That we'd have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ to where it'd be like sitting at the table knowing that all our adversaries are against us. we got the whole world. Sometimes we feel like the whole world is against us, right? And we could be refreshed by God's presence. We could be refreshed by his ministry to our lives. And he says it again. I want to read how he says it. You prepared a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honored me by anointing my head with oil. The refreshing. And then he says, my cup overflows with blessing. Surely your goodness and unfaithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. David had a hope. Oh, I love the way Jerry put it the other day. I kept, every time we go driving, we'd be talking about the Lord, and, and we'd be talking about that day that we get to, get to um, graduate, is what I always say. Jerry, he gave me a new word for it. He said, I think it's more like a promotion. Okay, I lost you. I'm talking about heaven. You know, whenever we leave this time on earth and we get to go be with our Lord forever, you know, living in His presence forever and ever and ever, having a new glorified body and everybody said amen, you know, having that place to where that I'll always be in the presence of my Lord, having that hope of knowing that this isn't the end, but man, what hope we have to look forward to. But he also seen himself as not just a guest that Jesus would invite over every now and then. To where he'd just say, hey, come over to the house tonight. But they didn't have a personal relationship. But Jesus wanted to spend time with him on a consistent basis. His Lord wanted to spend time with him forever and ever, he said. Where I dwell in the house of the Lord. To where the house of the Lord dwells in me. To where we are inseparable. This is the relationship we envision as a church that we have as a church. That we have such a relationship with the Lord that we're just, He's our all in all. You see, David, David recognized that his standing was not merely that of a short-term visitor who would be entertained once and then sent on his way. Nor would he be invited to return for a meal only occasionally. David rejoiced that he had been granted the high honor at sitting at the Lord's supper table as family. Would you stand with me?
Yesterday, I received a phone call from an individual who was very upset. And they were distraught because they didn't know if they was praying right. You see, what had happened is they had talked to some individuals last week or the week before. They had visited with some folks. And these individuals had shared with them that you're not praying right. Because they said you need to do this. And they had a formula worked out in how you're supposed to pray. They were distraught. They were upset and and very, well, moved and didn't know what to do. I've been sharing with the church for many weeks to where the Lord wants to write His laws upon our hearts and our minds. He wants to speak to us. But also, I reminded this individual that the Lord desires a childlike faith. We can go to Him just as simple as we are and visit with Him just like you would visit with me. And yes, we do have the Lord's Prayer, but basically the Lord's Prayer isn't something just to be repeated. It's something to talk to the intent of your heart. To where you're desiring the Lord's will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. You're desiring that He would forgive you as you forgive others. That basically you're trusting Him for your your way. That's what the Lord's Prayer is about. But the formula they give is said you've got to do this first and this and this or God won't listen to you. I'm sorry, it's wrong. I say that to say this. The Lord is my shepherd and I have all that I need. He wants to have a personal relationship with Darren Just like he created Darren. He wants to have a personal relationship with, what's your name? I knew I caught you off guard. He wants to have a personal relationship with, what's your name? Just like you are. Because guess what? He created you. He created you with purpose in mind. He created you with so much love. And so much to accomplish. You see, I've told you many times that Peggy and I was taught how to be a good pastor and how we're supposed to dress and how we're supposed to do, and it just wasn't Peggy and I. But we didn't freely get to minister the way the Lord wanted us to until we let it be us. And we begin to minister who we are. That I could be just Darren. Praise the Lord, that's all you get. You probably don't even want all that. But that's all you get. But what I'm trying to say to you this morning is the vision that we have as a church is that each one of you would know that He is all you need and that you would have your own personal walk and relationship with Him like David had to where He could give you the peace that you need, the encouragement, the strength that you need. He could help you with whatever you're facing. And you would be okay because it's you and Him walking this thing out together. And you're just talking to Him as your dad, as your Lord, as your Savior. Would you bow your heads just for a moment? I believe there's someone here this morning that you're just needing your Lord right now. You need to make Him Lord or you're just needing Him to be Lord. If that's you, just raise your hand real quick and say, Pastor, I'm needing him to be Lord right now. I see your hand. I see yours. Is there others? You can put them down if you'd like. Is there others? Okay. I just need him to be Lord. I need that personal relationship with him, and I want that. Is there others? I need that personal relationship with him. Now, those who have raised their hand, if you would like to come, I would love for us to have an opportunity to pray with you. I won't make you, but I want to invite you to come and receive. 
And there may be others that want to step out as well and receive this morning. If that's you, I want you to come as well. But go ahead and start making your way out if you'd like to come and let us pray for you this morning. Because we want to agree with you this morning. Come on up, buddy. You're fine. Come on up. Come on up. I need some ladies this morning to come together around these ladies here this morning. We'd love to pray with you if you'd like to come.
just told him I don't have any embarrassing stories on hand. He said, I can make one up. <laughs> uh, so when he was just preaching, um, he said a sentence that had reference to two ice creams. Did anybody catch that? There you go. Tim knows Darren. They probably think on the same level. If I was you, I would be very afraid. He, yes. David had a pretty rocky road. It wasn't all peaches and cream. So I brought that to your attention for a reason. Um, all this summer, or if you're like our house, we eat ice cream year-round. It's a staple. Whenever you open the freezer door, whether it's at your house or at the store, and you see Rocky Road and peaches and cream, I want you to remember what Darren said. Because life is not all peaches and cream, and there's going to be a lot of Rocky Roads. Okay, but the one thing that you'll always find is the Lord is always consistent and he's always faithful. Okay, so that's what you're going to take away from this rocky road in peaches and cream is the faithfulness of our Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He's so faithful. So let's leave with that. Lord, we are so thankful for your faithfulness that in you, we have everything that we will ever want and need. You are our focus. You're what we need and want. We're so thankful for that. Lord, be with us today. Let us, let us Lord, walk out of here knowing, Lord, that you satisfy us with your faithfulness and we're ever so thankful. Amen.